Hey guys, The Greatest Prayer, Chapter 22, The Art of Believing by Neville Goddard. This chapter really goes into discipline and disregarding any appearance or anything that comes into your life. Disregard the appearance of that if it doesn't match up or parallel with your wish fulfilled. Disregard the appearance of anything different than your happiness and your wish fulfilled and have the discipline enough to observe that and to change it and always observe people always see the best in people because the observer effect will actually change that person if you think something positive of this person it can actually change that person's personality through the law of thought transmission all right imagination is the beginning of creation you imagine what you desire and then you believe it to be true every dream could be realized by those self-disciplined enough to believe it people are what you cho choose to make them a man is according to the manner in which you look at him you must look at him with different eyes before he will objectively change. See, this is Neville Goddard is talking about the observer effect before the, before quantum physics even determined these were actually true. He was uh, just an awesome guy. He was way before his time. Two men looked from the prison bars. One saw the mud and the other saw the stars. Centuries ago, Isaiah asked the question, Who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect and the blind as the Lord's servant? The perfect man judges not after appearances but judges righteously he sees others as he as he desires them to be he hears only what he wants to hear he sees only the good in others in him is no condemnation for he transforms the world with his seeing and his hearing the king that sitteth on the throne scattereth the evil with his eye sympathy for living things agreement with human limitations is not in the consciousness of the king because he has learned to separate their false concepts from their true being to him poverty is but the sleep of wealth he does not see caterpillars but painted butterflies to be not winter but summer sleeping not man in want but jesus sleeping jesus of nazareth nazareth who scattereth the evil with his eye is sleeping in the imagination of every man and out of his own imagination must awaken him by subjectively <clears throat> excuse me affirming i am jesus then and only then will he see Jesus, for man can only see what is awake within himself, the holy womb in man's imagination. The, whole, the holy child is that conception <clears throat> of himself, which fits Isaiah's definition of perfection. Heed the words of St. Augustine. Too late have I loved thee, for behold thou wert within, and it was without that I did seek thee. It is to your own consciousness that you must turn as to the only reality. There and there alone you awaken that which is asleep. Though Christ a thousand times in Bethlehem be born, if he is not born in thee, thy soul is still forlorn. Creation is finished. You call your creation into being by feeling the reality of the state you would call. A mood attracts its affinities but it does not create what it attracts. As sleep is called by feeling, I am sleepy. So too is Jesus called by the feeling, I am Jesus Christ. Man sees only himself. Nothing befalls man that is not of the nature of himself. See, it kind of hits on the law of attraction here, guys. People emerge out of the mass, betraying those close affinity to your moods as they are in, engendered. You meet them seemingly by accident, but find they are intimates of your moods because your moods continually externalize themselves you could prophesy from your moods th that you without search would soon meet certain characters and encounter certain conditions therefore call the perfect one into being by living in the feeling i am christ for christ is the one concept of self through which can be seen the unveiled realities of eternity our behavior is influenced by our subconscious assumptions assumption respecting our own social and intellectual rank and that of the one we are addressing let us seek let us seek for and evoke the greatest rank and the noblest of all is that which disrobes man of his mortality and clothes him with uncurbed immortal glory let us assume the feeling i am christ and our whole behavior will subtly and unconsciously change in accordance with that assumption our subconscious assumptions continually externalize themselves that others may consciously see us as we subconsciously, subconsciously see ourselves and tell us by their actions what we have subconsciously assumed ourselves to be. Therefore, let us assume the feeling, I am Christ, until our conscious claim becomes our subconscious assumption that we all with open face 
beholding as in a glass the glory of the God of lo the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Let God awake and his enemies be destroyed. There is no greater pr prayer for man. All right, guys, the greatest prayer, the art of believing. Love this chapter. Leave some comments and questions. And I wanted to kind of bring to your attention a little bit about that, where you kind of get into the kind of the law of attraction here. Nothing befalls man that is not of the nature of himself. So pretty much talking about karma, the law of attraction there a little bit in a different uh, a little bit in a different language there. But he does hit on that, that we are responsible for everything that befalls us and to always assume the wish fulfilled until it hardens into a fact. All right, guys. Um, love you. Hope you like this. Talk to you soon.